Hello, my honey bunches of oats, my love juices, my love bugs. This is Jackie, and Jackie's cooking. Watch well, Jackie's baking today, and Jackie is making a delicious sweet potato pound cake with a delicious caramel pecan icing. It's moist, it's delicious, it's good, it's, oh God, let's just get to work. Guys, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so. And don't forget to press that notification button for all your weekly updates on all my delicious recipes. Like and share and let everybody know. Jackie's cooking. So we have some sweet potatoes that I had beaten and mashed. Some pecans. We have some butter. We have some evaporated milk, and guys, the recipe is in the description box below, okay? We have some sour cream, some allspice, five spice actually. We have cinnamon. We have pure vanilla. We have some baking powder, baking soda, and salt. Some eggs, our brown sugar, and our flour. And guys, ensure that everything is at room temperature. Okay, let's get to work. All right, guys, so I kicked up my stand mixer, my beautiful baby here, and we are going to start beating our butter and sugar. Okay, um, you don't have a stand mixer, a hand mixer. If you don't have that as well, you want to beat it by hand, knock yourself out. I love, this was such a great investment, having this stand mixer, because it really does make your life easier. Okay, so we're going to start beating our butter. And now we're going to add our brown sugar. Okay, and the reason why I'm using brown sugar for this, guys, is I love that depth of flavor that the brown sugar has. Like that, you know, close to that molasses taste. Because my uncle taught me how to make sweet potato pie. And he doesn't use white sugar. He uses brown sugar. So, you know, learning his recipe through the years, God rest his soul, I've adapted it and add my tweaks to it and um, now I'm just transferred here to this pound cake so we're gonna keep beating and we're gonna beat this for at least I would say eight to ten minutes okay as you can see when you start beating, it's gonna get light in color okay and at this point guys we want to ensure that we have all our ingredients mixed together well we have to scrape our bowl down we have to scrape the size of the bowl okay make sure that your butter and sugar are well incorporated okay um when i did this recipe um i also wanted to make sure that it wasn't overly sweet because of the caramel pecan icing that I'm making. So it's well balanced, but I made it where if you want to add more sugar to the cake, you can, okay? All right, so now this is nice, light, and fluffy. Okay, we're gonna scrape our bowl down again, scrape the sides, okay? And that's exactly what we're looking for.
Okay guys, now we're gonna start adding in our eggs one at a time. And we'll beat each of those eggs for about 20 seconds each, okay? Again, everything is at room temperature, okay? Okay, we're gonna beat that. Right now we're incorporating lots of air into this mixture right here. And that's also gonna add to the fluffiness of this cake. When I did this recipe, again, I didn't want it overly, the cake overly sweet because in contrast with the caramel pecan um, icing that I'm making, which is sweet itself, I find that there's a nice even balance. Again, if you want to add more sugar, I'll put down the minimum that you should add and how much you should add. You know, I mean, not, people really don't like stuff that's, well, a lot of people I encounter like stuff that's too overly sweet anyway. So, um, play with it. I know one thing you'll definitely love this recipe. It's just so moist. It's really, really moist. And it's better the next day. You know, so I would definitely bake this cake the night before, the day before. Let it set and tear into it the next day. I couldn't wait. I know. But you'll see why at the end. <laughs> okay, scrape down your bowls. Scrape down the sides. Okay, and um, guys, when you see the description I about the amount of eggs I'm using, I'm using, of course, large eggs and one extra egg yolk. And that just adds the extra moistness. I'm all about moist. It could look good, but it's got to taste good. And I need it to be moist. I need it to just leave that delicious mm, feeling in your palate. Okay, so now we're taking our dry ingredients. I'm adding my baking powder, my baking soda, and my salt. Okay, and we're incorporating that into our flour. Okay, now we're adding our cinnamon and our allspice. Okay, and we're mixing that. I was just mixing this for about a good 30 seconds because I wanted to make sure the dry ingredients were mixed together well. Okay, so now we're taking our mashed sweet potatoes and we're adding in our sour cream. So this is going to be all wet. These mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, these sweet potatoes, um, the other day I was making um, some baked sweet potatoes and I had some left over and I wanted to use it up. So what I did, you could either get, you could either boil your sweet potatoes or bake them. I baked them because I like the fact that it gets out that natural sugar and after that you're going to mash them. And get it nice and smooth and remove all those strings and stuff. So you mix your sour cream along with your sweet potatoes. Okay, we're going to alternate with dry and wet. Okay. So now, as you can see, 
when I'm incorporating the flour, I'm putting it on low. I don't want this to be, I just want it to mix. I do not want to overmix the flour. And, you know, I don't want to overmix the flour in here because I don't want a tough cake. Okay? So we're adding the flour, then you add the sweet potato and sour cream mixture. And I do it in thirds, one three parts. Okay, as you can see, I add it, and then I add my wet, and it's not too long till after I add the flour in again, because again, I want to do as minimum, minimal mixing as possible. Okay, again, ensure that you scrape the sides of your bowl. Okay, we want to make sure all our ingredients are well incorporated. I know you see all that flour flying all over the place. And guys, again, when you're doing this recipe, try it like this. And over time, you might want to add your own little twists or whatever to it. Um, you might want to add a different flavoring such as, um, God, not brandy. Um, oh, God, just went blank. I hate when that happens. It'll come to me. Bourbon. There you go. Because um, bourbon in this too is, <laughs> let me tell you, it's not a game. It's so good. Okay, we're going to scrape. And again, I'm just putting this on very low speed okay and now we're gonna stop right here okay and what we're going to do I'm going to take the beater Okay, and I'm going to go at, to the bottom of the bowl to ensure there's no leftover flour at the bottom, which usually happens, especially when you have a mixer. So you want to ensure that you reach to the bottom part to ensure all the flour is well incorporated, okay? Just as you see here, okay? And we're going to put this delicious batter, which is nice and delicious and thick, into a two pan. And this is a 10 inch two pan, which holds about 12 cups. But this is just enough. This bat is what is just the amount needed. It, it gives you the right amount of batter for cake, okay? So our pan is nice and buttered and floured. And yes, this batter is thick.
Okay, so we're going to smooth that top. And we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven. And I had this baking for about an hour and an hour and a half. I'm sorry, an hour and, and five minutes. So, you know, keep an eye on it because everybody's oven is different. Okay, and we're tapping our pan. I do it at least three to four times just to ensure we get any air bubbles from within our batter. And this is our cake. Okay, it looks delicious, doesn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So now we are going to make that caramel pecan icing I was telling you about. It's delicious, guys. It is so good, let me tell you. Let's get to it. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go ahead and do so. Don't forget to press that notification bell for weekly updates on all new recipes. And don't forget to like and share. So guys, I got a nice high pot. Okay, we're going to add our carnation milk. Okay, the recipe for this is in the description box as well. Okay, and we're going to put this on medium heat. We're going to add our butter. Okay, which is a quarter of a stick of butter. And we are going to add our... God, I go. You know what? I need some slate. I really do. I have just been going blank. You ever had those moments where you just go blank? <laughs> Everything is like, you know, you just lose thought, you know, but hey, you know. So now we're going to add our sugar. That was simple. I don't understand why I forgot that. But we're going to add our sugar. Okay. And we are going to keep this on medium heat. And we're going to cook this for about 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. And what's going to happen, we, uh, we want the sugar and the butter and everything to be incorporated. And it's going to start cooking down and it's going to get thicker. And you have to watch it because if you overcook it, then it'll turn into... Well, you can make candies out of this, believe it or not. You can make, like, praline candies out of this. But I want it at a certain texture. So, as you can see, this is after 20 minutes. As you can see, it gets thick and the color gets, like, a nice light brown color. Okay. And I'm using a wooden spoon to stir it. Okay, this is after 10, 12 minutes. As you can see, it got thicker. And at this point, believe it or not, this is where, this is actually the point where I want it. Because as you can see, as you're stirring it, you see how it, it leaves like a, a clean spot as you're stirring it. That's what you're looking for. So this is a very, very soft stage. Okay, and a good way to know is when you take a spoon and you could take your well, your fingers. You can see that space that leaves and it doesn't close when you run your finger through it. That means you got the right texture, the right texture right there. Okay, and as it cools is going to get thicker we have to add some vanilla to this we're going to add some salt to this um and our pecan chopped pecans and for some reason all that 
cools it down so it's gonna get thicker and you have to work quick okay So between 30 and 35 minutes, guys, on medium heat, it'll be like a nice thick texture, like a nice thick pourable texture. And it's gonna get cool and it's gonna get thicker as it cools. You see? God, I love this. This is so good. All right? So we're gonna add our salt. If you have sea salt, oh my God, on with this, absolutely delish. So we're adding our salt, our vanilla. And our chopped pecans. And please reserve some um, pecans on the side. So you could put on top of it as well. Even though there's pecans in the mixture, but you want to add more pecans on top too. If you want to. So as you can see, see how it got thick? So now we're going to pour this on our cake. Look at this. You know I wasn't lying when I told you this was... Oh my God. Doesn't that look so good? And trust me, it was really good. Now guys, let me let you know. Let this rest... It, to me, it's better the next day. So if you do it the day before, it's even better. Don't rush into cutting it like I did. I was too anxious. So I couldn't wait. But you'll see that it's just it's still warm. And it's so, oh my God, it's just so moist. And it'll start falling apart. So, you know, just be mindful of that. But as you're putting on your delicious pecan caramel icing... It'll start to get thicker and thicker. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, so what I did, I took some pecans and I just crushed them between my hands. You can leave them all. And I just put some more on top. I mean, it is a caramel pecan icing. So if you're going to call it that, add the pecans. Don't be skimpy with it. Doesn't that look so good? Ugh. You could use this icing on donuts too, on chocolate cake or whatever. On regular pound cake is good. Now look at that. This is the final result. Again, let it cool. Okay, but I couldn't wait. I was anxious and I wanted to cut into it. But when you look into it, you're going to see how fluffy it is and how moist. I mean, I could look at a cake and tell you how if it looks moist just by looking at the crumb and so forth look at that you just just look at that oh my god omg see that's what i'm saying let it cool down because you know then it's going to start falling apart cuz it's still warm and it's so moist oh <laughs> So, so good. Look at that. And guys, I'm telling you, this cake is just so good. Um, again, with, even with this icing, 
You could use this ice and make cupcakes. You could put it on chocolate cake. Um, you could add coconut to this icing. You can add it to a regular cake, caramel cake, what have you. Guys, this is so good. Enjoy it. Love it. And guys, don't forget to love everyone. Let's be in this together, guys. All right?